And I'm going to turn it over to Nancy and Dolly. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Hi, Sally. You're right up the street. So this is, so I'm Dolly. Um, Nancy is finding her slides. So we're about to get started. Um, so I'm Dolly Frank. I'm the Florida Electronic Library Coordinator, and I've done some statistics uh, for a little while. And Nancy. Hi, good morning. I'm Nancy Gidry Hall here at the Florida Division of Library and Information Services, and I've been the state data coordinator for a little over a year now. And there's Dolly. Ah, yes, Dolly. So I say I'm 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 Dolly because that's what I'm called. But if you're trying to email me, it's Dorothy Frank. Dolly Frank doesn't get to me. And Casey Shiley's on. What is the innovation officer from Leon County doing on a statistics webinar? I wonder. Well, the purpose of this webinar is to cover this year's data collection from Florida Public Libraries. And there were a few specific questions in the registration already uh, that will be addressed as we go through. And please feel free to put questions in the chat. I'll stop at the end of sections to answer questions. Um, but first we're gonna cover the objectives. Why do we do this? Uh, what's the purpose of the annual statistic re statistical report? I'll cover that briefly. Um, there are a number of changes this year and we're excited to have almost everything in one survey. But before we go over the specific changes, uh, I want to address the reason why the annual survey is so different in the process that it's been through in the last few years. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this, um, why is it important to have the data that all public libraries are being asked for at both the local and national level? At the local level, uh, tracking statistics shows both your accomplishments and your needs to decision makers. And at the state level, it helps the division assess community needs and trends across the state. In, the, in addition uh, to tracking what your own library is doing every year, it's helpful to compare your stats to other libraries in your area or to be able to compare yourself to libraries of similar sizes across the state. We publish the statewide data on our website. Uh, the 2020 tables are the latest available right now. 2021 should be there by the end of the summer. If you need assistance finding something or just getting there, or you need previous year's data, please contact me and I'll be able to help you. We are required to provide this information to the federal level library authority, uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, which is why we require you to report it to us. And we are required to submit each year's data. That's the data that's due from libraries in December by June of the following year. And the IMLS also publishes this data from the nationwide collections by state and territory. And you can find that at imls.gov. All of our state data ends up in what they refer to as the public libraries survey. Um, it takes them a couple of years to publish. I think 19, I mean, sorry, 2019 is the latest available right now. Their 2020 tables should be out this summer. Where do all the changes to the survey come from? Um, <laughs> I can't speak to the broader history of the public library survey, but having stepped into this at one of the more interesting time periods, I do have a view of this round of development. Um, everybody knows the challenges to libraries in the past couple of years have necessitated rethinking services. And of course, this is nationwide. 
public libraries have to prove relevance to keep funding coming from Congress. And therefore the collection of data to show what libraries are doing is evolving. Every state has a state data coordinator that's responsible for collecting and reporting public library data. And they, as a national body, ultimately decide what's collected and reported to the IMLS. There are other data elements that we, as the state library, want to collect for our own purposes, such as the economic impact questions. The process uh, here for adding data elements is a long one. Our survey is part of grant rules in Florida, and so it has to go through legal process. And this can take a year or two. So the changes I just received from the IMLS for this year have to be put through grant rules revisions before they can be added to the ASR. Um, when I started as state data coordinator last year, there had been a large amount of changes made nationally and by our department the previous year. And that's why there's been a supplemental survey for the past two years. What you'll be seeing this year has finally been incorporated after those two years. Um, and you can expect the survey to continue to evolve because the discussion of data points has really ramped up at the national level. And I actually have an SDC meeting tomorrow with the other state SDCs and IMLS reps to discuss that very thing. Um, are there any questions at this point? I don't see any in chat. Mm -hmm. Amy, do you see any in chat? No, no okay. not yet. Okay, well, we'll dive into the actual survey. Um, what's on this annual, this year's annual statistical report? What are we looking at exactly? There are some sections that are completely different in arrangement and a few that have more subtle changes. The biggest change is the programming section and how it's divided into four distinct counts of program types. And I wanna point out for those of you that have done the survey the past few years, especially uh, taking into account the ASR and the supplemental survey, this year, there's actually a net reduction of six in the total data points from last year. It may actually it may look a lot bigger, but it's it's truth a little less than it was for the two combined. Okay, we're going to start with an introduction to counting opinions. That's our survey instrument, and we'll take just a quick look at that for any new director here today. And then we'll walk through the changes by section and counting opinions. Um, most of you be, will be familiar with what this looks like. If you are new, be aware that uh, we send out credentials to everyone later in the year, probably in late September, when the opening of the survey is announced. So you'll be able to log in. Um, when when you get to the first page after the login, uh, this will take you to the actual survey. You can either hit the enter button or click on the link to the survey. All right, the first uh, actual change that you're gonna find after the identification section is in the survey uh, part called outlets. Uh, this is where there's, a, the, there's an addition and it is concerning fines. The question is, does your library charge fines for overdue materials? And this is a three choice question. Either yes, fines are charged for all types of physical materials. Yes, for some things and no, we don't have overdue fines. Um, I put this in the survey in anticipation of what the IMLS had proposed last year. Uh, this is something we really want to know about. Many libraries are going fine free 
but there are variations on how that's actually practiced, like what material this covers and also what age group the policy applies to. We didn't go into depth on uh, age groups. And I think this is an interesting example of the data element adoption process. A basic question about charging fees for overdue materials was proposed last year and at some point, the IMLS was wanting to break this down by age group. So it would have been a five part question in the end. Um, the state data coordinators just voted on this particular question earlier in the year. And the original question passed, but the age breakdown did not. So it was in Florida's survey this year because it was added to the legal process last year. It was a gamble on our part that paid off, I think. Um, when you respond to this particular question, adding a note here would be helpful to us, especially if you don't charge fines to specific groups or for certain materials, we'd like to know. The next changes encountered are additions that previously existed in the supplemental survey, and that is asking for an estimate of in-state revenue. And this is also so we can continue to track the economic impact of libraries to the state economy. And the same for expenditures. We want to know how much of your budget is spent in-state. We weren't we aren't looking for exact figures, but if you can provide a rough percentage, this is helpful. In the case, especially of in-state electronic materials, if you're part of a co-op and pay for, pay that co-op for electronic collections, um, that would count as in-state on your part, even if the co-op is purchasing those materials out of state. All right, the collection section. Uh, this is very much changed mostly in the arrangement. Uh, it's grouped now by either electronic or physical items. The changes are uh, current print serial subscriptions have been split into circulating or non-circulating. And then the other big change is the addition of other circulating physical items. And this can be anything that's checked out that is circulating, but, not, but is not already captured under books or audio or video units. And this includes things like mobile hotspots, um, telescopes, bicycles, fishing poles, or park passes, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> count everything else here. Um, and this will auto sum with the other physical categories for total physical items in collection. So the two questions that I see are hotspots and Chromebooks count for this circular. Chromebooks the count somewhere else. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Yes, okay. we'll talk about that in a bit. And then other include items from the library of things. So yeah, absolutely. That's what this is about. See, are there any other? I'm looking to see if there's any more questions. Seed library. Ooh. No, because seed seeds, although that's a wonderful thing, and I always take advantage of seed libraries. They're not circulating. They don't come back. You mean they don't come back? They go yes. into a garden. Yes. And get grown. Yes. Into pretty things or munchy things. Yes. So don't don't stop the seed uh, the seed collections. I really like that. Could that be counted as a program as opposed to a circulation? Oh, Dolly! I know <laughs> I'm throwing these questions at you. Just a question: Could they be counted as a program? I think so. You think so? The answer I, is yes. I think so. Okay. I think so. We could, we could perhaps discuss that <laughs> at the end of the month. <laughs> I like it though. I like it. Uh, 
even if it brings us vegetables. Oh, so that's a program. I, I'm going to yeah, say that's a program. Yeah, even if they bring us the vegetables. Yeah, but you're not giving them back out again, though, aren't you, Christopher? You're eating them. <laughs> I do like to see, see the um, So still in collections. Um, one thing I want to point out in collections is the way electronic collections, which are databases, is um, We, the state, makes a number of databases available to all public libraries through the Florida Electric electronic library. Uh, this past year, there were 51 in total. If your library pays for other database services, this is where Yeah, we just got an unstable. Uh -oh. Sorry, I'm gonna do a chat here. Our audio. Yeah. So just the. Are we are we back? Is the L back? Can you hear us? Are we good? Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. Okay. Back to databases. And what counts as a database for the purpose of collection totals or what counts as part of circulation? There are a number of payment models, uh, but unless you pay for unlimited use of a particular collection, you won't count what is available through a database as part of your collection. For instance, a number of libraries have Hoopla available. And there may be a half a million titles of eBooks available through Hoopla but this is a pay per title service. So you'd only count the number of titles that you pay on behalf of your patrons as your collections, not their entire collection. And in that particular model, they'd also count as circulation. And I, I'm not gonna go into details on the possibilities here because there, they are many, um, unless you have specific questions, but there will be guidelines for this posted on the statistics website soon, a sort of flow chart that hopefully covers most of the models of electronic services. So it gets, gets very complicated. And there is also a second webinar at the end of June that will be more of a Q&A nature. And that would be a good time to discuss collections and circulation of electronic items, especially in more detail. I think I'll just one time. Sorry. In the next section, circulation. Circulation of other physical items is also added here. And then there are two questions on reporting method counts. So, in addition to the auto sums in this section, there are some items that should add up to the same amount. In the case of the total annual circulation of materials, like I said, which is an auto sum of the circulation of adult and youth materials, this should also equal the sum of physical item circulation and the use of electronic materials plus the other materials uh, because the adult and youth amounts of circulation should be including all three of these formats. The system is going to ask you to have these sections equal each other this year. So, so Nancy, question, and I think you're going to answer this anyway, but I'm just going to bring it up. If they don't differentiate, for example, fishing poles mm -hmm. between adult fishing poles and youth fishing poles, what do they do? Well, yeah, I was. If if you can't break down the circulation of electronic or other materials specifically by age, please credit it to the, I'm gonna to say to the adult so that it does 
balance and add up because not counted is an option in your circulation items. But if you take this option for one category, when it's submitted at the national level, the total of your circulation is going to be not counted. And which is, is different from what's going to show in counting opinions, but they have different criteria. And when they see not counted in one category, they say, well, you can't have, you can't have a number there because part of it was not counted. So if, if you don't differentiate for, especially for other things or electronic items, credit it to one of the other categories. I would, I would say adult. So you, so you would say, so if, if they're circulating fishing poles, hmm. put all circulations in adult and then zero in children? Yes, if you don't count anything else in, in youth. Yeah, so if, or if, or if all of the fishing poles are adult, but they also have junior telescopes, they could count the junior telescopes in youth and all of the fishing poles in adult. Right. And have two, two numbers. Right. Right. Okay. But if you, if you know you have, if you're counting a circulation of a certain item, put it in one place or another. If you, if you don't have a division between youth and adult, put it one place or the other. So it does count in the end. Um, in circulation, one related point here is the successful retrieval of electronic information, which is a subset of the total electronic content use. And that can at least be partially be counted through the Gale portal and Dolly is going to address this. So just before we move on, there is a question here. Okay. Is a zero better to use in cases when than not counted for survey questions? De it depends. It depends because zero, zero is the counting an amount. It means you had zero, you were counting but you're choosing to count zero in a certain category. Not counted means you didn't track the number at all. So, and, so for example, if you offer electronic resources and nobody checks a single electronic resource out, that would be a zero. That would be a zero. But if you don't count them, you know you've got lots of people checking them out. You've got lots of checkouts, but you don't count them. You are able to, to for some reason, then that would be not counted. So that's two different pieces of information. But what I think the challenge is, is when you have a not counted in one area of circulation, then the feds think you didn't count any which isn't the case. So well, is, they'll say they'll say how can you you can't have a sum of of more than one item when you didn't count part of it. Yes, yeah, so you can't add a now not counted together. Like yes. not counted plus 10, they don't say it's 10. It's they mean it's, it's not, not counted. counted, but mm -hmm. you can add 0 to 10 and it'll equal 10. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to go over this a little bit more when we get to the programming because it's the same in programming although even more complicated. But. Okay. Did did that did it, that answer your question Jessica or did we just make it more muddy for you? Yes, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it more muddy. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Well, Dolly's going to show you through the Gale dashboard, so yeah. so we can count uh, successful retrieval of electronic information, perhaps. Yeah. So um, so for example, I know for a fact that every one of you has fifty one Gale databases that you uh, can provide to your patrons, and as a result, we also give you the ability to um, pull those statistics for those databases. So uh, you go, now you're seeing my login because I'm the FEL, but you would have your own login. If you don't have that login, let me know 
Um, and I will, and my, my information is gonna be on one of the slides at the end and I can give it to you as well. Uh, let me know and I'll get you your, your credentials to log in. So when you get in, this is what you're gonna see. Um, it's a straight up dashboard. You can see pretty figures. There's a lot of power to this dashboard. There's a lot of things you can pull. If all you're interested is just your straight usage statistics, all you have to do is put in your dates that you're trying that you're pulling and hit apply over in the right hand side and it's going to um, just pull it and you can see your sessions, your searches, your retrievals. It's very straight up. Um, and you can see there's my there's my email at the bottom um, to to uh, to. Would you go back one for me sure. just a second? So I'm also going to point out, I know this is one of my favorite things to show off because I really love it. If you look at the top, you can see dashboard, which is the landing page that you're looking at with the, with the graphs. You can download the graphs. You can share the graphs. You can change your metrics. You can um, change a few other things as well. You can compare years. So this is, I urge you to go in and play. The other thing, and I'm, I'm just going to mention very briefly, is up at the top, you can see reports, insights, compare, some things like that at the top. The reports are made so that you can go in and see other things. One of my favorite reports that I pull that I use heavily every month is, um, what are the words that people are searching for? What are the search terms? There's a whole report that you can pull for that in there. I'm not, I didn't go into detail because it's not specific for your, your um, ASR that Nancy is talking about. But again, it's very powerful. Um, let me give you your uh, login information and you can go in and, and pull some amazing information about what people are using, how people are using it. Um, and it goes back several years. So let me do that for you. Thanks, Polly. Yeah. And so we're still in circulation. Um, the last bit is the addition of some reporting method counts, the reference transactions and library visits reporting methods. Uh, these are either annual count or annual estimate. And if the annual count is unavailable, uh, count transactions during a typical week or weeks and multiply it to represent the annual estimate. And that's it for circulation and collections. For now, the, the one last part uh, before we get to programs is under uh, resources. And there's an existing data point of the number of internet computers for the general public this is where you'd add the num well, add, add in tablets to the previous definitions of desktops and laptops. So Chromebooks would count here, but the Chromebooks would also count in circulation as other. So, so you, you're counting in both places? Yes, because the, it's something you check out, but you'd also add the, the number, number of that the number that you have available to this particular data point. Um, there's also two other reporting method questions here for a reporting method for wireless sessions and the reporting method for number of uses of public internet computers. And again, uh, annual count or annual estimate. Any other questions before we dive into programs? I'm not seeing okay. any. Okay. No? Okay. Okay. So programs. Um, here's the breakdown of the program types. We expanded the definitions of programs in 2020 to include virtual programs and also to record self-directed programs. And you've seen this for two years in the uh, supplemental survey. The IMLS has now in just the past year 
added a large number of data points to also capture these different categories of programs and participants. So Florida is actually way ahead of the curve on that. The IMLS also added the breakdowns of children's ages that apply to the active programs and the distinction of on-site versus off-site in-person programs. So like I said, if, if you've done this the past couple of years, this should all look familiar. Hybrid programs. Yeah, we're going to talk about those in just a second, Paul, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, to be clear on what you're asked for here, any program, regardless of format, should be counted in the appropriate section. Um, a program is defined as any planned event intended for a group, not for individuals, that is implemented, sponsored, co-sponsored by your library. And this can include programs conducted by vendors that you hire. Um, they can be held in person or virtually in real time or asynchronously. The first section is active in-person programs, and this is the, the traditional definition of programs. This section alone has the additional elements of on-site and off-site for live in-person events which should equal the total number of programs, the on-site and off-site together. If, if you know it was an off-site, then the balance of that number should be listed as the on-site. Um, you'll also see that all the program sections now have the number of programs and the number of attendees side by side, and hopefully this will make it a bit easier to track and enter. Another change is that both in-person and virtual active programs have children's ages split into zero to five and six to 11. Active virtual means live. And this means done in real time. This is not recording of something that was done earlier. You can credit recorded programs under the self-directed section. For the live streaming, how do you count that? Um, attendance equals the total number of views, and this is the count of people who tuned in at some point. Count views of at least one minute, if that's possible on, on your platform. Some don't allow it. Um, again, each view counts as one attendee, unless you happen to have other information about the viewers. Uh, that's the best you can do is count each view as one. And as your session ends, we suggest that you take a screenshot showing the participant list, again, if that's possible, since some platforms don't retain statistics. Um, Self-directed, both in-person and virtual are counted. For examples, like scavenger hunts in, the library for in-person or a virtual escape room online for a virtual self-directed program. And you'll notice that children's age categories are not separated for self-directed programs. Um, for all program type categories, again, we'll talk about not counted. If you didn't, if you truly didn't count pro programs, that would be appropriate. But if you had program, but it, you didn't break down the age groups, uh, please report them. I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest if you didn't if you didn't count each program as separate or you didn't specify an age group that you can count that under. I I would suggest you do uh, all ages and report the other categories as zero. And again, zero and not counted are two distinct things. Zero is a count, it means you had none. And not counted means you didn't capture an amount. 
but this is the same as the circulation totals when it comes to reporting it at, a, at the federal level. If you choose not counted for one category, the total is gonna be not counted regardless of the totals that you did report. Uh, this is also true for the children's age category breakdown. If you didn't distinguish zero to five and six to 11 this year, I would split the numbers or make a rough estimate but a not counted is going to negate any category that you do fill in. So please give yourself credit. Did I cover Are all we, the qu any yeah, questions? Yeah, we've, we've got the hybrid program. Okay. We still have to talk about that. And then I've got a, a couple of questions that talk about um, back, back with the Chromebooks. So let's, let's pause. And, and, and take those after the programming questions. But okay. There's still one about that. What have you got for programming? Um, so the, it's, it's talking about the um, hybrid programs. How do you count hybrid programs? Um, do you want to do a generic or do you want someone to give you a specific question about uh, that? A, a, a specific example would be good. Okay. All right. Are and we, then another question we've got is we've, We've got questions about annexes that I threw in the, an answer into the chat. Um, if, if the library program is held at a library annex, is that part of an on-site Is it a program? branch is it, or, or a, mo a bookmobile we're talking about? Well, if it's an annex. So I took that question as, as some of the annexes that I've used, which is, yeah, a building that, that they're, that they are able to use it's sort of part of the complex. So, if it's part of the complex, then that would count as on site. Yeah. Um, and then and then um, there is this, there is some distinction about bookmobiles, though. I and I, there was some discussion at the national level, and I think it, I think the decision was if it's a regularly scheduled bookmobile stop then you would count that as on site. But if it was at a special event, like at a fairgrounds or something, uh, that would count as off site. So if it's regularly scheduled bookmobile stop, it's part of the library. It's part of the library. And yeah. if it's, if you drive it to a fancy new location where <laughs> it is only gonna be for that one time, then that's off site. That's, that's off site, yes. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and so the, and then the annex, um, it's the same parking area. It's just a building across the complex. So that would be on site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that if it's a program, if you're, if it's part of the city, if it's not actually part of the library complex, but it's part of the municipal government or the county government, it still I, would be off site. I think that's off site. Yeah. Yes, it would still yeah. would be off site. Okay. So. And then another question was. Um, the hybrid programs. Did we get a specific in here? I don't see the specific. So, like, like it was, I so guess, a story time that's both live, live and, and streaming. And streaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you count that? Well, you'd you'd count it as one program. One program, but you do have two distinct uh, audiences. Uh, audiences. Mm -hmm. so, so you count both. Both. You count both. You count the in person at whatever age range it was targeted to, and then count your online participants under virtual. And, that, and you would count the program since it's a hybrid program and it, yeah. it can't be both virtual and in right. person. So which- But if it's, if it's in person, I would count it as in person. In person, even if you are streaming it. Yes. Okay. Yep. So um, how about other um, types of hybrid programs? I can't think of too many. Well, there's, uh, there's record, you can do live streaming and then, then record, then record have the recording available. Okay. And that, that, again, that would be one program, two audiences, which you would count separately. So one would be, yeah. Uh, live in virtual, virtual, and the other one is self-directed, self-directed virtual. virtual. Okay. What you don't, the, the only thing you you don't want to end up with 
zero programs with account of participants. So if you have no mm -hmm. other self-directed virtual programs, you need to count something as, a, as an actual program yeah. for that purpose. So uh, Christopher says we do live stream for those who can't attend. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of these. So that would be awesome. one program with two different audiences. Two different audiences, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Right yeah. So and then the question, let's go back to the question about the, the uh, Chromebooks. Chromebook. Yeah, which was, uh, unfortunately, my computer is sliding. Well, Let me I get could there. say it, it counts as it, it. It basically count in two different parts. You'd you'd count it as the uh, number of internet computers available for the general public under internet and, and electronic resources. So it counts as the physical unit. If you have five Chromebooks, add that to that number but they're also in circulation. So you'd count them in circulation of other as well. Okay. Yep. Okay. And scrolling down to see if there's any other questions. Nope, no more questions. Although somebody might be typing, but we'll catch up with that. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then lastly, there is a very small supplemental survey, and it's only aimed at libraries that were not open for the full year. Um, if any of your outlets were closed for emergency, please complete this. It's divided into COVID-19 and other emergency questions. If you had closures for other reasons, uh, Please add notes to explain for us. This. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, somebody made a comment about the the c word. We, I didn't. Did I didn't say? We well, it's it, it's not only have we said it out loud. It's also on the actual like. It's on the survey. Survey. It is on the survey. So on and the survey. this is this is mandated from the IMLS. Yes. So I literally have no choice, right? But to ask these questions. Yeah. So and, and and so so if if anyone has been impacted by either the COVID nineteen, which is now what COVID twenty two, um, or some other, and when we, we talk about other emergency closings, what yes, what does that mean, Nancy? Well, they're just parallel questions. Um, uh, no, I can't. I can't remember the specific questions. Um, oh, did you have? Did you have specific services? Did you have uh, outside, outside services? services? Did you have Wi-Fi outside yes. for folks? That kind of thing. Yeah. And the question about other emergency or if, for example, uh, an outlet was closed because there was a wildfire or a hurricane or a water pipe breaking and you had to close yeah. it, but you still had some kind of services at that location. So. So this is just sort of the, the it, it's paralleling, as Nancy said, the COVID questions, but just in case, I mean, we tend to have 2021, yes, the, no, the, the one that ends in December, right? You're, or, or sorry, not December, September, bad, September. yes. The, the, the year that ends September 22 is, the, is what this survey is about, yes. yes. So, so it's the one that's coming up in in with a due date of December. Correct. Correct. It'll open the first of October and close the first of December. Yes. The, the question was was the questions are referring to fiscal year 20 to 21, but it actually refers to fiscal year 21, 22. 22. Correct. Correct. And it could be that the COVID questions are completely moot here in Florida because um, we may or may not have any libraries in the state that are closed due to COVID, but this is from the national level and there could be libraries elsewhere in the, in the nation that are closed due to COVID. And so we're required to ask the questions. We might have none, but other emergency closings we're still very interested in. If you, if for example, you've had to close because of a hurricane or a, a fire or a flood or a tropical storm or as somebody did ask does this emergency 
um, include construction or renovation? I'd say if it came down to that you were closed uh, without uh, without planning. Uh, you know, if it wasn't a so plan. If it was a planned close and they're yeah. planning, if it's a construction grant and they're renovating or something, then they wouldn't count that as an emergency. They would they would just report at some point. I would report that under outlets, put a note in outlets. But it's not sure. an emergency. It's not an emergency. So closing. you would just answer Correct. renovation or construction in the regular ASR questions. Right. It says, and then you'd be categorized as temporarily closed. Yeah. It's, I can think of one library that's under that. Okay, I'm going to scroll Let's up because I've seen a whole bunch of questions go flying by me. Oh dear. I certainly hope this is the last time you'll see that first section to the supplemental survey. Yeah, we're, and the, the, yeah. the second part is going to be incorporated into the main ASR for yeah. next year. We yeah, hope. we're going to move that forward. Can we get a copy of the updated survey ahead of time so it we can is, share it with our colleagues? It is available on the website right now. And Amy, can you put those links in the chat? Yeah, the definitions and instructions are actually on their website right now, as is the supplemental survey, so you can see all of the questions. Okay. But you won't be able to see it in counting opinions for Till the end of the of summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you see any anything else? I, I didn't. Okay. Not at this time, but that doesn't mean that somebody isn't typing frantically. <laughs> We'll give it a minute or two. Yeah. So. And like I said, there is another webinar planned for the end of June. Um, yeah, we're planning on doing some um, slightly deeper dives. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the circulation and collections in greater detail and show you that the flow chart for deciding whether you're counting this of things as part of your collections and what counts as circulation for the electronic things. And I also want to go over some issues uh, for cooperative members in particular. Okay. Uh, there's some issues with counting, okay. counting things and anything else that might come up. So, and I did miss a question. I, I apologize, Jessica. I did not, I missed it. Um, the question is, is a book vending machine, is that a, a no, answer the, so, oh, this is, is it an outlet? No. Is it an outlet? It is not an outlet. I'm, Although that is something I, I have to say, that is something that that is on the radar at the national level because it is it's becoming a popular thing. And so it might so, it might be something we could possibly be changing at some point. Is that it, it, it could be or it, it could be an addition. Yeah. So so then the question, Jessica, I'm wondering, so if you have a program at a library book vending machine, does that count as off-site? I think not because it's it's a kind of an extension of the library. It's more like a stationary bookmobile in so a it, way. But it's not because book aren't bookmobiles considered? Well, they are outlets. But, outlets, but, I'm saying but a vending a, machine is not. Right, it's not. But it's a state. It's it's in my. Just my opinion. I think it's an extension of the library. Do you, do you feel differently? I I don't. I'm happy to go with whatever decision you make, Nancy, um, because I don't think this is a question that we have ever answered before That's in true. our lives. It's an incredibly good question. <laughs> it is a very good if question. If you're playing stump the chumps here, <laughs> <laughs> I think you stumped us, Jessica. In fact, I'll, I'll bring that up tomorrow when I talk to other SDCs. Uh, it is a very good question. Yeah. So, um, so then the next question is for now: How do we port an off-site book kiosk? An off-site book. 
So how do you re do we report? How do we report an offsite book kiosk? It's not an outlet. It's not an outlet unless it's staffed. Unless it's staffed and so, full time. But it, but the circulation would count if they're checking books out of it. It would still count towards circulation. Absolutely. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I think at this point you don't report it. It's not it's not counted as a separate as outlet. a separate outlet. Okay, then another question is, did the age groupings change this year? And I think the answer to that is yes, they, they did. Were, well, actually, that was on the supplemental last yes. year. But now it's official. It's now it's official. Yes. So like got, I said, it took us two years to get from what what we wanted to collect to actually collecting it on the official ASR. And then it just happened, it, it, by, by lucky chance, that that's what the IMLS was wanting to collect anyway. Yeah. So. So I guess there's a, at least one question that we need to figure out and let people know the answer of, and that is if you have a program at a vending machine, does it count as on-site or off-site? So what we're gonna have to do is ask IMLS what they think mm -hmm. and let you all know. Yep. We can send that out in an email. I definitely, definitely I, will send it, yeah. I will send it to the... Uh viewing audience the viewing audience and then we might bring it up again in the fact later um do we owe you any other answers i'm kind of scrolling through the questions i don't want to skip anything or if there's like a really hard one that we need to get back to you on remind me what it is Anything? No, okay. although I do know that it does take a second or two for the words to come through the ether. So we'll we'll sit here for a second or, <laughs> or so, waiting for the words to come through. But I think that's the end of our official. And there's there's my contact information, and of course it'll be on the recording. And there's Dolly's, if you have any questions about the FEL. FEL or, or other electronic, electronic resources. And I'm gonna jump in here and say, um, so the Florida Electronic Library is a Yale product. The Florida Electronic Library's dashboard will give you the, the Florida Electronic Library resources. It will also give you any other Yale products that you purchase at your own library. It's not gonna give you EBSCO. It's not gonna give you Hoopla. It's not gonna give you any of the other electronic resources of, and variations thereof. So um, I just wanna let you know that, uh, that you have to add EBSCO, for example, in or JSTOR or any of the other uh, wonderful inf electronic information that's out there. Um, but I'm happy to answer questions and please send me, if, if you don't have your access information to that dashboard, please send me an email and I'll get it for you. Yes, the recording absolutely will be available. And I guess I look for the announcement for the next one at the end of June. The end of June. See, the major difference between this year's ASR from last year is we've taken supplemental questions and added it to the official ASR because they are now part of the official um, IMLS, but also state questions. Um, you won't be asked the same questions, questions in two different it. places, which is a, yeah. a good thing. Which is a good thing. Yeah. That's the major change. Yeah. That's the major difference. All right, well, thank you everyone for attending and as Dolly said, this will be recorded or, or be posted on the on the YouTube, YouTube yeah. and the website. Yes, thank All you. Right. Thank please, you. please contact us. Yes, please. All right. Thank you very much.
Thank you.